Another day, another book. But this one is a game changer. The mindset of a salesperson is the difference between success and mediocrity. A lot of salespeople are concerned with quotas and quick wins. However, the trick is to frame sales as a marathon, not a sprint. Every sale should be long-term, relationship-driven, and referral-oriented. Inethical practices like deception and ignoring boundaries tarnishes the reputation of all other honest salespeople. The difference between successful and unsuccessful salespeople is the distinction between trying to sell what you have and creating an environment where a prospect can buy your solution. Jeffrey Gittimer, also known as the King of Sales, is an American speaker, successful salesman and also the author of the Sales Bible. Now in its 18th printing, and customer satisfaction is worthless, customer loyalty is priceless. If you enjoy learning about these topic and want to stay updated on our latest videos, make sure to hit subscribe button. The 12 Red Principles of Sales Greatness Jeffrey believes that sales are more than selling a pitch. It's a craft that doesn't stop once your 9 to 5 ends and requires constant learning. 1. Kick your own ass. It is very easy to create excuses when results don't come through. Instead of complaining about the quality of the leads, or other typical excuses salespeople give, like anything else in life, it's wise to stop and do some introspection. What can you improve? What are you not willing to do that is jeopardizing your results? By always being critical of your performance, you are making sure you don't stagnate. Like other fields, sales require constant learning, and there is always something we can do differently. 2. Prepare to win, or lose to someone who is. A key component of a good first impression is how well you are prepared. How much time did you spend learning about the client and their company? Showing effort and competence can be achieved by taking the time to research and find common ground or pain points with your client before the initial conversation. Clients will respect you for the time you took to learn more about them, and if they respect you, there is a big chance they will like you. All of us buy from people we like, and if you are not making an effort to show you care, someone else will. 3. Personal branding is sales. It's not who you know, it's who knows you. You are more likely to buy from someone that a friend of yours recommends or knows. The reality is that the more people know about you and how good of a service you provide, the more they are willing to share and refer you to a friend. This also applies if you can add value to every single interaction you have with clients. Giving value first is a way to show you are trustworthy and serious about what you do. It's all about value, it's all about relationships, and it's not all about price. The more value you add to your clients, the more you build that relationship and go beyond the product you are selling and your end of the month quota, and the best you will become in what you do. 4. It's not working, it's networking. Once again, sales don't stop when your 9 to 5 does. Every opportunity you have to network, to give a talk where you are making yourself known, can bring more prospects than any cold call. Allowing people to see you, and get to know you as a person and not just a person who wants to sell them things, will make a huge difference. 5. If you can't get in front of the real decision maker, you gotta try harder. One of the crucial things once you are speaking with a potential buyer is to understand what happens after that conversation. If they need to validate this with someone else, then you are not speaking with the decision maker. If possible, always try to offer yourself to present this in conjunction with the person you first spoke with to the decision maker. No one can sell internally the product like you can, and oftentimes information gets lost between endless threads of emails. 6. Engage me and you can make me convince myself. Long monologues on uninteresting topics and excessive self-promotion can both lead to a lack of interest or success, whether in social or business situations. Effective communication means engaging with thought-provoking questions that show genuine interest in the other person's needs, leading to a productive and engaging conversation. Smart questions also showcase your research and expertise, and they can lead to more meaningful interactions that benefit both parties. 7. If you can make them laugh, you can make them buy. A great way to engage with clients is to bring humor to the table. You must be able to read the room and understand if there is space for this level of engagement. If there is, there is no better way to start a good conversation. Remember, if they like you, you have a better chance of them buying from you. 8. Use creativity to differentiate and dominate. These days, we know that if you use the same template and speech that was used 10 years ago, no one will even care to start a conversation with you. 
We live in a day and age where we are constantly being bombarded with communication from different platforms. To stand out from the crowd, you must see where and how you can innovate. If you don't feel you are a creative person, train yourself with hobbies that push you to think and see things from a different perspective. 9. Reduce their risk and you'll convert selling into buying. At the end of the day, clients want answers and a solution to their problems. As Jeffrey writes, the biggest barrier to a sale is the unspoken risk that a prospect perceives. Every time you say a word or take an action in the selling process, the prospect is judging either your product or service. It's your job to make it transparent the risk of buying versus the reward. What is the need versus what is value? The better the sales questions you make to uncover this, the more attuned you and your client are going to be. 11. Antennas up. There are two types of salespeople. The ones that are always paying attention to where they can find potential new business, almost like an extrasensory perception. The people that wait for the potential clients to go to them, which is fine if you have a very rich network, but still something to avoid. The more aware and out there you are, the more potential new business opportunities you will be able to spot. The idea is to do sales forever and keep looking into how the market is shifting and changing. 12. Resign your position as general manager of the universe. The best approach to sales, or any field, is to always assume you know nothing. Maintain a student mindset and to continuing to push the boundaries of what you are doing or how you think you should be doing things. The Little Red Book of Selling by Jeffrey Gittimer is a practical and concise guide to sales that provides actionable advice and strategies for improving sales skills. It is a must-read for anyone looking to build relationships, establish credibility, and close more deals. Thank you and have a great day.